I told you. Gather the berries. Pay attention and gather the berries. Aloy, come now. Gather the berries. I told you. Gather the berries. Aloy, come now. Gather the berries. Their power must be respected. But I will be beside you. So before too long, Aloy actually grows up, and uh, that's where the majority of the game takes place. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of gameplay. The main thing that stands out to me about this game is just how amazing everything looks. This is probably the best looking video game that I've ever played, like bar none. It's just amazing looking, and it looks even better if you play it on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, the, the really interesting thing about this game is that it takes place in the distant future. So it's it's post-post-apocalyptic. Um, I feel like post-apocalyptic settings are, are very played out at this point in video games. And uh, I don't really need to see another game that takes place like after a nuclear war. You know what I mean? Unless it's a Fallout game, because Fallout is telling a very uh, clear story. And the story of Fallout is actually pretty fascinating. Uh, how it's an alternate timeline where um, technology evolved differently from how it evolved in our timeline. So I'll take a Fallout game any day. But as far as other uh, post-apocalyptic games go, I just, uh, yeah, I I'm kind of good with them for the time being. I I'm a little bit tired of, of seeing that setting. This setting, however, this takes you beyond your typical post-apocalyptic setting. This is a thousand years after the apocalypse. So you have a situation where the vegetation has taken over, where the, uh, the wildlife has taken over, although the wildlife seems to all be mechanical, which is pretty weird. And I'd like to get to the bottom of that. Really curious as to why there are machines everywhere. Oh, there's, there's a rabbit over there. So there are, there are still animals that are real. They're not all mechanical. But it certainly does seem like the machines are dominating the landscape. And uh, they are not letting me scavenge in peace. Luckily, they're pretty weak at this point. Oh, there's no. I think I got all of them that time. So yeah, this game is just very compelling. You're, you're going around fighting machines, gathering parts, scavenging, putting things together. Very cool stuff here. And anyway, as I was saying though, I really appreciate the setting. It's almost like Planet of the Apes. It's like something bad happened a long time ago, and this is the end result of it. The far, far future, uh, humanity has kind of devolved a little bit while um, technology has improved at the same time that humanity has developed. The only thing is that it seems like there are other creatures that are developing the technology as opposed to humans. It seems like the machines themselves have some pretty advanced equipment. Um, not sure if they're self-perpetuating, if they're designing new versions of themselves like Terminator or uh, I think I'm in the clear. Second Variety by Philip K. Dick, you know, that kind of story or if these are just leftovers from the fall a thousand years ago. Somehow I feel like the machines are self-perpetuating. But either way, it's a really interesting concept and I definitely wanna, uh, wanna play through this game and just find out what happened. And I hope that the game explains everything. I really hope that this isn't one of those games that you get to the end and it doesn't really explain a whole lot and then you're sitting there and you're going, okay, so when's Horizon 2 coming out? You know, I, I don't I don't want that. All right, so I just made some some hunter arrows. I think I need to make fire arrows. Select 
Fire arrow. Okay, there we go. Okay. So it looks like we just made fire arrows. Okay, so I've got the fire arrows. Now all I have to do is go back to this other guy and he'll give me a glider, which is pretty cool. Just gonna sprint back there. But yeah, how amazing looking is this game? It's just really outstanding. I think it's right up there with Witcher 3 as far as just very pretty open world environments go. Thing is, though, this game, it, this game does lighting effects better than any game I've seen in a long time. And the color palette is astounding. It's just, it's so bright and colorful and, uh, yeah, I just really like this game a lot. I like the protagonist, too. She's, she's very cool and she's just brimming with personality. Whenever you see her interacting with other characters, she exudes personality. And she's got a lot of attitude. You know, when you play as her as a kid, especially, she's just brimming with attitude. And uh, I find that very refreshing. They could have just made her flat and uninteresting, or they could have just made her like a generic male character, basically. And, uh, they didn't. And I know that it's, it's tough for a lot of game designers to create compelling female characters for some reason, um, but they definitely succeeded here. She's, uh, she's formidable. She's, uh, she's got a chip on her shoulder. She, she believes in herself. She's, uh, she's just very, very interesting, actually. You know, she doesn't really fall into any particular stereotypes, which is excellent. Now, is it just me or does this guy look exactly like Liam Neeson with a beard? I'm, I'm just saying he something about this guy. Surprised you Liam Neeson. The way you keep looking every other direction to make sure no one's watching. Careful there, you'll sprain your neck. You see the attitude? She's got so much attitude. Girl, one way or another. Stop acting like a chuff. <laughs> Once you run the proving and get made a brave, you'll deal with traitors in mother's heart. I don't like losing customers. Traitors who don't break the law and deal with outcasts, you mean? That's right. Our days of crime will be behind us, so long as you keep quiet. I've got what I need. One thing I don't like about these cutscenes is that they do not break eye contact with each other. <laughs> you know? Now, I'm all about people having good eye contact, but... You have to break eye contact a little bit here and there, otherwise it gets creepy very fast. All right, so we got a new weapon. So now I can create trip wires. Excellent. Just because I'm shunned doesn't mean I won't pass through. Oh yeah, so um, she gets kicked out of her village, sort of, and uh, it's a lot like Secret of Mana, except without the incredibly depressing music that plays when you return there, but the cool thing about Aloy is that she don't give a shit. She'll just walk right back through the village. She's like, yeah, they don't want me here, but I'm just going to walk through anyway. I don't care if they all look at me. I'm Aloy, bitch. I think the sun might be setting. Look at how red everything is right now. Yeah, the sun's definitely getting low in the sky. Look at this. Seriously, look look at this game. This is this is something. It's really something. It's something else. You guys, you can even see the uh, the shadows from the trees. See that? See the shadows from the from the trees. Moving across uh, Aloy, I mean, look at that. Shadows from the trees are actually reflected off of your character. It's, it's insane. Just they, they did such a good job with the visuals in this game. The actual gameplay, it innovates in some ways, but in other ways it's not really anything that hasn't been done before. It's got a little bit of Tomb Raider, a little bit of Far Cry. Um, Hold on. 
I think this might be a bonfire that I haven't gotten yet. Hey, yeah. They're here. But you know what? The way it combines those elements from those other games, I feel, is very effective. You have the firearms. I do. Those explosions and shouts beyond the embrace. Is that the trouble you were talking about? You will know soon enough. Until then, we wait for dark. Wait for dark? Look, Rost. I've thought it through, and I'm not going to shun you after the proving, okay? I'm just... I won't do it. I'm not about to pretend that you never raised me. Aloy, the law forbids all contact. It does, and I don't care. I know what duty means for you, Rost, but all tribal law has ever done for me is take things away. And that's not gonna happen again. Aloy, I must obey the law. And so you will. I knew you'd say that, so this is what we'll do. I'll come to you in secret. No one will see me, so I won't get in trouble. A and I know you won't talk to me because it's against the law, but I'll talk to you. It'll be my crime, not yours. You'll just listen. And that's how we'll handle this. You've put a lot of thought into this. I know. So you can stop worrying. It's handled. Yes. So it is. Still a while to go before dark. I guess I'll get some rest. Good idea. There'll be no time for sleep tonight. Right. Rest at the campfire. How, how do I rest at the campfire? I don't even know how to do that. Um, I guess save? If you save at the campfire, that's how you rest. No, I just did that. Maybe that is how you do it. Okay, alright. So that's how you rest. You, you just have to save the game. With threats unlike any you have ever faced. So now we're setting off into Mordor from the looks of things. Man, things just got very dark out here. Yep, this is definitely Mordor. What happened to it? A machine, that's what. What sort of machine does that? The sort of machine you're hunting now. Oh, I see. I just want to take a moment to point something out. Look at how clear the sky is. You can see basically the entire Milky Way right there. And uh, that might be Andromeda over there. I'm not sure. But yeah, this, this is insane. I feel like this is what we'd be able to see in our own night sky in the present day if we didn't have so many lights on. And this is a world where we don't they don't have all the lights because there, there are no lights left. All they have are campfires, torches here and there. There aren't cities that are giving off massive amounts of light. There aren't towns that have street lights on every corner. So because there there isn't a huge amount of light kind of bouncing off the upper atmosphere and uh, obscuring our vision of the cosmos, the characters in this world can look up and see basically the entire universe before them. It's pretty, pretty incredible. Not the entire universe, but everything within, you know, eyesight. You know what I mean? I like finding loot without actually having to fight anything. That's pretty cool. Wait a minute, there's something there. I'm gonna try the trip caster. 
Now I just have to lure it over. Okay, no yeah, come get me. Yeah. So that basically stuns them and then you can run in and hit them. Very cool. That is an innovative weapon right there. I haven't seen a weapon innovate like that since uh, Bioshock, actually. Bioshock 1 and 2. Um, I think the crossbow had a certain upgrade that lets you set trip wires. It was a lot of fun to play around with. Bioshock, I think that might have been the last time I was truly wowed by a new game because it just innovated on every level. And Bioshock 2, I think, was underrated. It was it was more of the same, and more of the same was a very good thing when you're when you're Bioshock. Bioshock Infinite was kind of a letdown for me, though. It just it didn't innovate as much as the first two. It, it seemed like the gameplay was really dumbed down. The story was actually better than the first two. The story really carried it, but the gameplay was super simplified and it, it took a lot of the fun out of it you know i wasn't thinking about setting trip wires i was just running around chucking grenades and it, it's like if i want that i'll just play call of duty you know what i mean that's a whole other series what we have here is an entirely new ip which is a bold move in this day and age a new ip that may or may not even succeed right out of the gate but judging from the quality of this game I, I think this IP might have a long life to it. Hopefully it sold well. I really hope it sold well. Because we should, we should get at least two more Horizons in the future. And, uh, yeah. Really good stuff here. Alright, here we go. Gonna use the trip wire again. Oh. There we go. I think I did something wrong there. Alright. Gotta get in there and get, get in there for the kill. Looks like it loses health very fast from the trip wire as well. Wow, this thing had a lot of health. still going. Yeah. Yes. All right, get back in there. Looks like the red line is the health meter. There we go. All right. That that might have been the first boss. It almost seemed like a boss fight. Yep, <laughs> got a trophy. Probably was the first boss. Survival requires perfection. It was a test to hone my skills against a dangerous new machine. Follow. These are Nora hunting lands. They must be protected. If you hadn't destroyed the Sawtooth, how many braves might it have killed or injured tomorrow? The lesson lives within the question, Aloy. For years, you've trained to win the Proving, but only for yourself. As a brave, it will be your duty to fight for your tribe. My tribe? You said I wouldn't need them. But I never said the tribe wouldn't need you. The strength to stand alone, Aloy, is the strength to make a stand. To serve a purpose greater than yourself. That is the lesson you must learn. And remember it. After the proving. And after I'm gone. We're finished here. Follow. All right, well, I think that does it for Horizon Zero Dawn for today. This is a really excellent game. Um, this is one of the few games I've played in the last couple of years that I think it might be a 10 out of 10 right out of the gate. I've only played a couple hours of it, but I'm, I'm really just 
nothing but good things to say about this. I've, I've just been completely wowed by everything that's happened so far. I'll see you at Mother's Heart then. You will. Yeah, I can't even remember the last time that a game uh, blew me away this much in the first couple hours. I'm a couple hours in now, and yeah, this this game is just really outstanding. Going down and, fast. Uh, definitely recommend it to basically anybody that plays video games. So, well done.